Hello and welcome to this tutorial on matching cameras or matching footage and compositing elements in After Effects and then also how to use that information to make it easier to match cameras and footage in Premiere Pro. The Premiere Pro side of things, if I just show you the Premiere Pro project we worked on before, we've got two pieces of footage which don't actually match and we use the levels effect to be able to match the two pieces of footage. Now it's a lot clearer to be able to use the level effects in After Effects as I will demonstrate in a minute than it is in Premiere Pro. So all you need to do to apply this to Premiere Pro is to take the levels information that you collect in After Effects and simply paste it into the various bits and pieces there are here in Premiere Pro. And I'll demonstrate that at the end because I'm going to show you the main principles in After Effects and tell you that you're going to get a better result probably because of the visual feedback in After Effects if you simply copy and paste the levels information from After Effects to the levels effect in Premiere Pro. Right, back to After Effects. So again, we are going to be looking at the colour information of the three channels of the footage that we want to correct. So we've got RGB, red, green, blue and we want to be able to match the colour information from the two, in this case, two cameras that we have so that they look pretty much identical as we look at each individual colour channel which will then give us a much better composite, a much better look and match of the actual footage between the two items. Now, this is the item that I want to match and this is the item that I want to match it to. And before I go any further, I've also got an element in here which is a, a picture that simply doesn't match the actual footage itself. And all I wanted to say is that the same principles I'm going to demonstrate with the split viewer also applies to a single view. So that you can composite to make sure that whatever is in here looks very similar channel by channel to what's in here so that they look like they match. Okay, so firstly I need to see these two composition viewers side by side. Now there is a keyboard shortcut to do this, whether you remember how to do that or not, which is Control alt shift n or Command option shift n And if you have your composition panel selected, and you do this particular shortcut, Control alt shift or Command option shift n you'll end up with something that looks like that. And the original one is locked, as you'll see over here, and the new one where we can select a different composition view is open here. But if you can't remember the shortcut, I'm just going to X this off, turn off the lock. This is how you would do it. So I've got my composition viewer here. You see this drop down here. Drop down it says new comp viewer. Open up the new comp viewer. And the first one's locked here and this is the other comp viewer and we can choose the other composition in there. Now actually this is the one I want to lock because this is my reference one so I can just hit the lock button up here and that one's now locked. And This is the one that we're going to be working on which we can unlock and make sure that we have the right composition selected. There you go. Because this is the piece of footage that I'm going to be working on. And I'm going to be applying Levels Effect. And I'm going to select my footage. I'm going to go to Effect, Color Correction, Levels. And that's applied. Now, what am I looking at here? Well, I've got the channel information. You can see right at the top here, you've got red, green, and blue, the bits that are just red, green, and blue. And then the yellows, the magentas, and the cyan are where the color channels mix together. So this is colour channel information for the image that we're looking at, which is this image over here, because this is the footage that it's been applied to. So it's looking at this image to give us this feedback, and this here is an indication saying that it's pure white, and this here is an indication of saying pure black, and this is the grey scale, where it should be pure grey in the middle. If I move this to the right, I'm saying that every pixel below this point is pushed to pure black, and you can see that that is darkening the darker pixels and not really affecting the lighter pixels that much. If I take the other end and I start to pull this to the left, I'm saying that every pixel above this point is going to pure white. You can see I'm clearly affecting the whiter pixels that are, that are blowing out until the whole thing's going to blow out completely. And if I move the gamma slider in the middle, this one here, and I pull it one way, it's going to increase the range of dark pixels, and so the whole thing's going to darken up. And if I pull it the other way, it's going to increase the range of light pixels 
and so they're all going to light up. Basically these pixels here are now all greater than mid grey so therefore the whole thing's raising. You put it the other way these pixels are now all darker than mid grey so therefore the effect is the whole thing darkens up and really we want that back at 1 and these are the numbers underneath hit that to 1 so you've got 0 is pure black, 255 is pure white and the gamma slider 1 is in the middle pure grey the other two sliders here are mapping sliders so that if I have moved this slider here and said that all of these pixels from 217 to 255 or the value of 217 to 255 are pure white all of those are going to be pure white but actually my system won't cope with pure white I need to actually reduce the overall brightness so that it can't go to pure white because it's blowing out I can pull this slider down which is going to reduce what is seen as being pure white you can go all the way down on that one basically you're pushing your pixels towards grey but sometimes, and you'll see in this example being able to move the output slider to map these pixels so this says 217 and above is pure white but if I move this down to say 238 it's basically saying 217 to 255 which all should be mapped to pure white will actually only be able to hit 238 so I've mapped this range to this point and the same with darks if you were to pull your darks in so that saying everything from and we've got here 34 to 0 should be pure black but my system won't cope with black I can make them not quite completely black by moving that across so that's now gone to say 15 so I'm saying that everything from 34 to 0 on my input should be pure black but I've said that they can't go down to 0 they actually can only go down to a minimum of in this case 15 okay I'm going to reset that back to zero so that's how this particular effect works but the beauty of it is we can get access to the red green blue and if we needed to the alpha channel on this particular example we don't need the alpha channel but we can get to the red green and blue and because of that we can change individual channels now this is no different to the Premiere Pro example I showed before except that we can get better feedback in our comp viewers in After Effects. Let me show you. I'm going to select red in my levels. So I'm looking at the red channel of this particular piece of footage and this is what it looks like in levels. But more than that, if I select the footage, I could if I want to Alt 1, which would give me the red channel. The, uh, the keyboard shortcuts are Alt 1, 2, 3 and 4. So Alt 1 is the red channel. You can see that by the red lines up here. Alt 2 or Option 2 is the green channel you can see it from the green lines alt or option 3 is the blue channel and alt or option 4 is the alpha channel and alt or option shift 4 takes you back to RGB but the way to get them if you can't remember the keyboard shortcuts is simply to drop this drop down here and you've got red green blue alpha and straight well actually we want RGB or red so at the moment we're looking at the red channel in level so I want to take this one to the red channel and I want to take this one also to the red channel. So both of these are looking at the red channel. Go back to my footage. What I want to do is match the red channel look here with the red channel look here and then do the same with the blues and the greens. Okay, so how do I do that? Well, let's have a look here. Um, the darks are not dark enough, so I need to pull my darks up a bit to get the two to look dark this is two cameras looking at the same thing this camera is a prosumer camera this camera is a professional camera and obviously it's giving you a much better result so what I want to do is match the professional camera with the consumer or prosumer camera here as best I can you'll never get them perfect but at least I can get them a lot closer so I can start visually trying to get this wall color here looking closer to this color here and now clearly he's too bright and in actual fact I could theoretically move this across to try and do that but you'll notice that if I start to move the gamma across to try and make changes although it is having some effect and he's getting closer to where I want i am still got this man being blown out in the middle so what I actually need to do is take the output slider here and saying look these ones are pure white pure white's not working for me nothing's pure white in here really so I need to pull down the output white slider to try and get rid of some of this excessive blown outness now they're beginning to look a little bit closer might just do a little bit more on that one 
So you get the idea, you kind of move across channel by channel to try and match how they're looking. Pull that down even more on that side. And then what you do is you go from red, and I'm only doing this very quickly, I might spend a bit longer on it in reality. Green, then make sure this one is in green. Make sure this one is in green, and the visual feedback is superb. That's clearly green, and these two are clearly green. So the green channels, how are they looking? Now again, this is definitely too light, and I've got to have to pull down the output slider a bit again. And that's just greying the whole thing up for me really. So I'm going to pull the black slider up a bit. That's definitely bringing back in a bit more contrast. And you can clearly see that the two are beginning to match a little bit better. Might just pull that across slightly. And we're beginning to get a better match. I'm not going to spend ages on this, but this is just an example. Go back to blue. Here the blue channel. And again, I want the blue channel here. And I want the blue channel here. And crumbs, you can see the difference. Notice also that the blue channel is always the noisiest channel. This here is the more professional camera. And this is the more prosumer camera. And just look at the noise difference in the two. This is much, much noisier. But that's just the nature of the beast. The more you spend, the better results you get, basically, with your cameras. Okay, so I'm going to, again, pull up the darks a bit because I need to darken it up a bit. Try and get a better match. And again, I think he's still a bit blown out here, so I really want to pull down these whites again. And that's beginning to look a bit better. Okay, so I've tried to match the three. Now I can go back to RGB, the keyboard shortcut. If you want to use a keyboard shortcut, Alt, Shift, 4. I'm just going to go back to RGB. So that's the original. And that's our altered footage. It's not perfect, but let's just turn levels on and off and see what it looked like before and after. Before and after. Before and after. Now I'd have spent longer doing that, but for this example this just shows you how you can use this wonderful feedback in After Effects to actually see the individual colour channels and try and match those colour channels. And this red channel has definitely got a problem. Now just be careful, because at this stage I'd be very tempted to leap back into my levels, but actually I'm still at blue. So be very careful that you're on the right channel before you start jumping in and changing things. So I might pull that down to darken up a bit more. Might want to pull that in a bit more. Maybe just move my gamma slider across slightly. This this is the channel that I think's got a lot of the problems for me. Okay, go back to my final view, RGB, RGB. Okay, okay, you could spend longer on this, but this actually lets me demonstrate one other thing. The other thing you can do is if you play with the gamma sliders, you're going to be adding and taking away colour. So if I move this gamma slider in the middle, and be adding more red in, and if I move it the other way, I'm going to be adding more blues in. And actually you can then come to the final RGB and go and between the channels, green, adding more green, magenta the other way, and you can actually use your eyes now to finish it off if you haven't got the perfect result. Again, we're adding blue if we go one way, we're, taking, we're adding green if we go the other way, we want less green. And we're getting closer and closer. And so it's, it's a push-pull process. It's definitely a push-pull process of going through the whole thing and trying to make it work. When you've got a satisfactory result, or at least you're close anyway at this point, and you feel that you're close to what you actually want, what you can then do is take this information here and copy it across to Premiere Pro. So in my example, I'm just going to take Premiere Pro, shift it across like that, so that I can see my levels effect applied, all the bits and pieces I want, and take After Effects, and just, again, shift that halfway across. So I've got the two side by side, and because I've got the two side by side, I can clearly see here I am at blue, so blue should be, let's do this very quickly, I'll do one and then I'll pause the video and show you the rest. So we've got blue, input black level should be 12, click 12, and then 255 is definitely correct for that, and then my gamma should be 1 point, gamma's at the bottom here, just be careful. This is one other thing, it says 1.02 in After Effects where it says 100 in Premiere Pro. Actually all you need to remember is multiply this by 100. So when it says 1.02, this should be 102, 102. And my black output level 
black output level is zero, but my white output level should be 222. Okay, I'll pause this and do the rest so you can see the end result. Just go to the next channel and plug those figures in. Okay, so I've plugged those figures into Premiere Pro. Just going to maximize Premiere Pro very briefly to show you what I've done. In fact, I'm going to reset my color correction workspace, reset current workspace. Yep. And I'm going to shift this one back up here. There you go, put them side by side. Now you can clearly see that these are much, much closer than they were before. It's not perfect, as I said, I would have spent longer doing this. But you can see that we've got a much better, closer end result than it was before. If I turn the levels effect off, you can see the difference between the two is huge and could be jarring. Turn it back on. There you go, you've got a much closer match. So by using After Effects, I can clearly see this channel information and make much better decisions very, very quickly. Lastly, if I want to match a composited element, I'm actually going to shut this viewer off. So I've just got the one viewer. If I want to do the composited elements, I can do exactly the same thing. Select the element I want to composite with the original. Go Effects. The last thing I chose was Levels, which is under Color Correction Levels. And then I can once again look at my RGB channel, so red. Alt 1 or Option 1 will give me my red channel. Now I can try and match the two. I'll briefly do one channel. Pull the darks in a bit more so that it's closer match. Brightens just a tad brighter. So that we're beginning to get a bit closer. Maybe darken the whole thing up a tad. Then we can go to the green channel. And I can go to the green channel. That's Alt 2 or Option 2. And again, we need to darken this down quite considerably. Perhaps you've got some real whites, and I just move the whites up a tad. And I'm going to very briefly finish this as an example. Blues, Alt 3 or Option 3, get my blues. Again, I need to darken this down. Actually, I don't need to take my darks down. I've got the darks not too bad. Just pull them down a tad and darken the whole thing down up here. And maybe just pull those brightness bits in, out just a bit. Maybe darken the whole thing a bit more. There we go, and if we now go back to an RGB, which is Alt Shift or Option Shift 4, we're beginning to get something that's beginning to look a lot closer as if it belongs, as opposed to something that's really bright and clearly not a composite. If we wanted to composite a real element in there, that's how you would actually shift the two together. Obviously this is a poor example because it's just a picture, but at least they look as if they're in the same room as opposed to being in different rooms. One final comment about Alt Shift and Option Shift 4. If you actually look down here, you've got one that says Straight RGB and RGB. Straight RGB will give you yellow bars like this, which is Alt Shift, Option Shift 4. If you want to then get straight back to your straight R to your normal RGB, you just do Alt Shift or Option Shift 4 again, and you end up with the icon and the RGB level. Notice the icon difference. You've got this sort of three triangles interlinking versus the three circles interlinking and no bars at the top. And really you want to work with RGB rather than the straight RGB. And you can see the end result is certainly something that looks like it matches a lot closer. Well, I hope you found this useful. It certainly works as a solution and it gives you much better feedback than working purely in Premiere Pro. But if you want to composite elements together or even match footage so that they look correct, match your cameras, this is the ideal way of using it with fantastic visual feedback. And one very last thing. If you are a user of Premiere Pro and you would love to get this colour information in Premiere Pro, send a feature request to Adobe. Adobe are very good at looking at feature requests and I think for Premiere Pro it would be much easier for us to do this type of thing in Premiere Pro alone if the red, green and blue channels were available to us in Premiere Pro and not just in After Effects. My name's Andrew Davis. thank you for watching. <laughs>